Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the public access test, public access training, what it entails, and why every public access test is not going to be exactly the same. But before we dive in, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Lisa, I'm a certified professional dog trainer, and I've helped hundreds and hundreds of pups and their parents live more peaceful lives together, improve their communication, and better understand how to effectively and efficiently train their dogs through the power of force-free dog training. As far as service dog training goes, I've volunteered as a puppy raiser. I currently volunteer for a service dog organization that helps individuals self-train their service dogs and have helped many, many clients pass the public access test. Through this experience, I've learned how expensive service dog training can be, which is why I love sharing content here on YouTube to make it more accessible to everyone. That being said, if you do feel like you want a little bit more support, be sure to check out my Manners Mastery program, as well as my Focus Training course, which is for those who are just starting out with their training that really wanna learn how to get their dogs focused anytime, anywhere. And I'll link to those below, but I also do want to provide resources resources here on YouTube for you for free, like I said, to make it more accessible to everyone. Okay, so before we dive in though, one more thing, I do have a free public access test resource for you. So if you download that PDF, I'll include a link to how to download it below. But if you download that PDF, you can have a printable version of this information and kind of check each item along as you go through your training. So with that out of the way, let's first talk about what the public access test, abbreviated often as P-A-T, PAT. Let's talk about what it is first. If you're like, I already know what it is, I don't care. I've included chapters in this video so that you can skip ahead to where you want to view. So the public access test, also known as the PAT, whether a service dog candidate is truly ready for service dog work. It tests to make sure that your dog is properly in public space and perform their disability tasks to help their handler. Many public access tests will also have a section for testing the humans on understanding your rights because a sad reality is not every store owner or person in public is going to know what rights you have. Questions, sometimes they ask you questions that are actually illegal to ask someone. It's important that you have an understanding so you can properly defend yourself when someone is asking you a question. Another thing is making sure that your dog is well cared for so that they're an excellent representation of the larger service dog community. Now, a really important thing to remember is that here in the US and many other countries, I can't list the laws for every country, nor am I an expert in all the laws in every country. But here in the US, no, you are not required to pass any official public access test. However, it is highly recommended that you do take a public access test because this will ensure that a non-biased third party has actually vetted your dog and that they are truly ready. Additionally, if it's an organization doing the test, they're going to require it because they wanna protect their reputation. So they wanna make sure that they are certifying a candidate that's actually going to be good. Now, last but not least, it's also going to give you the confidence to know that your dog is truly ready. Now, the reason why each public access test is going to differ slightly is because it depends on the organization that is administering the test. But most public access tests are going to include the same elements that I am going to list in this video. Many are based off of the ADI's public access test, which is an international organization. And that is one reason why you may want to certify your dog through an organization that is compliant with the ADI and that's a member of the ADI because when you travel internationally, it's gonna make it much easier. But otherwise know that there is no requirement to certify your dog. People prefer to get certified just so they have an extra resource to go to and feel that extra little bit of support when they're out in public. Okay, so that being said, let's dive into the different aspects that you'll most likely be tested on for a public access test. Know that most public access tests are going to give you an immediate disqualification for the following. First is if your dog barks and or lunges. Second is showing any signs of aggression. And third is using the bathroom inside, which most likely is typically gonna be a problem with male dogs who like to mark inside. That's why it's important that your dog is fully potty trained before your test or just in general before you go into a store. And while this isn't part of the public access test, that's why it can be 
is so useful to teach your dog to use the bathroom on cue so that you can make sure your dog has emptied their bladder before entering a store. With that being said, let's dive into the main aspects of public access test. So typically first you're going to do a temperament assessment, which is to ensure that your dog's temperament is good for being a service dog. Usually the test administrator will check out their teeth, their tail, their ears, their paws and brush them. And then they will also test to see how they do being left alone with the administrator of the test for three full minutes as the handler leaves. This ensures that if you ever need to step away from your dog, your dog isn't going to freak out. For example, if you're planning on traveling with your dog, sometimes you need to go get an extra pat down and let's say officer is going to hold your dog while that gets done. You may need to have someone hold your dog for a moment to stay calm in those situations. The second thing they're gonna do is have your dog exit the car and be able to put their harness on without being distressed. So this is the exiting the car portion of the test. So you're gonna open the door, your dog should be able to stay on cue. They should stay until you've given the release cue. They should be able to put on their harness easily. I like to use a get dressed cue, which I have a whole tutorial on, I'll link to that up above, and then put on their leash without any issues. As you walk through the parking lot or the parking structure, are they able to stay in a heel next to you, not wander off into the street? Do they stop when you stop? Are they able to empty their bowels before entering the building? And as you open the door to the building, making sure that they're not rushing ahead of you through the door, are they able to stay at the door? and then wait until you hold the door open and then let them through. The administrator will most likely test you on is making sure that you're holding open the door for your dog as they walk in so they don't get their tail stuck as the door closes, which can traumatize your dog permanently. Also, you wanna make sure that you are being careful around any door that requires some sort of sensor because sensors are tested on humans, not dogs. So if your dog goes through a automatic door, making sure that they're not just stopping potentially being able to get stuck between the doors. So hopefully that makes sense. As you enter the building, typically you are going to be asked to perform basic manners like sit, stay, down. And the test administrator is just making sure that your dog is able to do the manners in a public space. Then doing a recall at the end of the leash. Once you are walking through the building, your test administrator is going to make sure that your dog can heal in a variety of distractions. So can they heal as you turn left, as you turn right, as you go upstairs? as a shopping cart rolls by? Can they heal as you are rolling a shopping cart? Are they able to heal next to you? The next thing that your administrator will probably test for is being able to make sure that your dog can heal even if you drop the leash. So this is called a dropped leash heal. So meaning that once your dog realizes you're not holding the leash, are they able to still stay in a heel? Because the reality is we're human. We may sometimes drop the leash. We need to make sure that your dog isn't going to be like, oh, I'm free. Let me run around in the store. Next is going to be interactions with other humans. Your administrator is going to ask a stranger to come up to you and say hi. They should be able to stay in a sit even as you shake hands or just interact with this person. And then we want to make sure that your dog is okay being touched by a stranger. So typically in public, if someone asks to pet your dog, you're going to say no, they're working. But for the test specifically, it's seeing whether your dog can handle if someone doesn't ask and just pets your dog. We wanna make sure that they're not gonna be aggressive, show extreme fearful behavior, things like that. Which brings me to the next point. The dog should never be soliciting attention from other people as they walk by. Now, the next thing is making sure that your dog can handle kids. So what's gonna happen is a kid will approach your dog, the kid will pet your dog. And we just wanna make sure that your dog is able to handle being pet by a child as well, or at least being around a child and not showing any aggression towards children. Your test administrator will put human food on the ground without your dog trying to go for it. So you shouldn't have to say, leave it, or anything like that. You can say leave it as you're about to walk by, but your dog shouldn't be going for it and you shouldn't have to stop your dog, if that makes sense. As you're walking, your test administrator 
will most likely give you a heads up, but obviously your dog won't know, and drop a loud object behind. Your dog can be startled, which is a natural response, but they shouldn't be so fearful that they're distracted for the rest of the test. So what I mean by that is they can be like, just like a person, be like, oh my God, and then be like, oh, it was just that basketball or that book that dropped, and then move on with their life. Next, you're going to have to practice going in and out of an elevator. So making sure that you are actually holding the elevator because once again, these elevators have safety measures for people, not dogs. So as you enter the elevator, stay, then you can let your dog know to come in and your test administrator should be looking for whether you are holding the door for your dog making sure that you're keeping their tail safe. Just a reminder, in case you don't know, no escalators. Escalators are never safe for a dog. Same with moving sidewalks. The dog can get their paws stuck in between, which is not safe. Next, you're gonna practice restaurant behavior. So this can be in a food court. You don't actually have to go to a restaurant to officially eat. Usually you go to kind of a to-go place just to practice. And so what you'll do, sit down at a table and accidentally drop food, and your dog should be able to ignore that food. Even without you being excessive, saying, leave it, don't do it, your dog should just naturally leave that alone. Your dog should also know to quickly go under the table as soon as you approach and sit at a table so that they're staying out of the way of walkways and not tripping servers and things like that. Also, it goes without saying, your dog should not be soliciting for food from other people or from you and they should be able to calmly lay down under the table. Next, your administrator will test for your dog's ability to perform the disability tasks that are meant to help assist you with your disability. And this is only if it's possible, right? So what I mean by that is if it's deep pressure therapy, then that's something you can show your administrator, but if it's seizure alert, obviously, you're not going to try to have a seizure for the test. So as long as it's saying you'll want to demonstrate that your dog is able to provide that support for your disability. Next is exiting the building, which is very similar to entering the building. So making sure your dog doesn't rush out the building and they can heal through the parking lot. So last but not least is loading into the vehicle. So you should be able to open the door. Your dog shouldn't rush into the vehicle. They should wait until you say hop or whatever your cue is, and then they go into the vehicle. So that's usually the last thing on the public access test, just to make sure your dog is comfortable going into the car and they're not gonna trip you or anyone else. Now throughout the public access test, your dog should be controlled while walking, meaning they're not rushing ahead of you, pulling, staying behind excessively, where you have to pull them forward. They're not wandering too far off, so they're staying by your side. And that's kind of something that the whole public access test your administrator will be looking for. You'll also be tested on how well your dog can handle being around other dogs, just in case you come across any other service dogs. So being able to walk by another dog six feet away is going to be very helpful. There's also other distractions that the test may look for, like is your dog able to handle an umbrella being opened by them? Is your dog able to handle a bunny running by? Which is hard to replicate for a test just because there may not be bunnies or squirrels in your area. But your test administrator, at least what I do, is I bring a flirt pole and wave it around to make sure they can ignore that distraction because that will be somewhat similar to a bunny or a squirrel. Another thing that your test administrator may look for is whether your dog shows any signs of resource guarding, which can be part of the temperament test as well. So if your dog already has a chew or a bone, is someone able to take it away with your dog? getting upset or getting stiff. So they're the main aspects of a public access test, but like I said, they may differ slightly, but if you're covering all of those items, you should be very well prepared for any distractions or things they throw at you. One of the first ways to get started with public access training, if you're not sure where to start, is to pass the Canine Good Citizen test, which is going to be a more watered down basic version of the public access test. They also do have some more advanced tests like the Canine Good Citizen Urban or the Canine Good Citizen Community version of the test. So those are good ways to also test and prep for the public access test. Now, if you're looking for support with public access or preparing for a good citizen test or whatnot, I do have a program called Manners Mastery that you can check out. And that is one-on-one -on -one live support with me for three months and like a boot camp style basic manners where we go from having your manners 
like sit and down inside all the way to being able to do them outside as well. So I've included a link if you want more information on that program. I also do have my Focus First training, which is all about making sure your dog is able to focus on you in any type of distraction if you want a more DIY version to get started on this training. Okay, so that's it everyone. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below if you found this video helpful write helpful in the comments. It helps me out a lot. And just a reminder, if you want more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell to be notified every time I post a new video. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.